This morning's service is taken from Celtic Daily Prayer, a Northumbrian office, which is compiled by the Northumbrian community in Lindisfarne. This might be one of the last services I do from the vicarage, as rumours were around yesterday that I might soon be able to live stream services from the church. We live in hope. 1 thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen, O Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Psalm 125 Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. It cannot be shaken, it stands fast for ever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and evermore. Surely wicked rulers will not continue to hold sway in the land allotted to the righteous, or the righteous may put their hands to injustice. Do good, Lord to the good, to those who are upright in heart, but to those who turn aside in crooked ways. May the Lord make them go the way of evildoers. Peace be on Israel. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and look after it. You may eat from any tree in the garden, he told the man, except from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat from that, you are surely doomed to die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I shall make a partner suited to him. And the New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 2. They met constantly to hear the apostles teach and to share the common life, to break bread and to pray. A sense of awe was felt by everyone and many portents and signs were brought about through the apostles. All of the believers agreed to hold everything in common. They began to sell their property and possessions and distribute to everyone according to his need. One and all, they kept up their daily attendance at the temple, and breaking bread in their homes, they shared their meals with unaffected joy. As they praised God and enjoyed the favour of the whole people, and day by day the Lord added new converts to their number. Without homes, beds, shelter, jobs, money or meals, over 3,000 people had decided to drop everything to gain the depths of the riches of knowing Christ. How they would do it without starving, no one knew, nor did they care. Their hearts were set, they would know the Lord. Where would they get food? How? In general, would they survive? 
there were a few people among the 3,000 who actually, actually did live in the city of Jerusalem. These few people volunteered to open their homes to the rest of the 3,000. This was just like the situation of the 120 when they came into Jerusalem, rented a big room and all piled in together. Only this time it was 3,000. Can you imagine 3,000 people flooding into and around about 50 homes? It appears someone who owned his own house came up with this next idea. My home is paid for. I can sell it, take the money, rent three homes and buy food. Soon all of the Jerusalem believers were not only selling furniture, but their homes and properties. If you find it hard to believe men would do such things, then you have never been in the flood-like joy of church life. In the midst of total joy, men laid down all because of their simple, overwhelming love for Christ. And the love grew out of their experience with him. By now, all 3,000 were getting involved in this sell-everything experience. The 3,000 who once lived in other cities and other countries began writing back home to have their houses, goods and land sold. They took any kind of job available. The church cut its teeth on doing the radical. It had its beginning in being practical, not conventional. Church life was born when a bunch of believers, half out of their minds with joy, gave up all they owned and piled into a few houses and started living together. It is hard to explain this thing called church life. You have to experience it. God never intended you to be his followers without it. The life of a, of a believer was never intended to be experienced alone. Let us pray. As we recall the foundation of the early church, of people coming together from across the Roman Empire to worship, to share fellowship, to break God, and most importantly to know Christ more. We pray for ourselves, for Christ's church today. We pray especially at this time of national lockdown, when many are isolated and are barred from sharing the, their common life with others. We give thanks for all of those who are doing everything that they can within government guidelines to maintain that sense of community and well-being, of caring for neighbours, of providing food, conversation. We pray for those who put their lives at risk to care for those who are sick. and to provide essential services. In this period as we move towards Ascension Tide and Pentecost, we pray for that outpouring of your Spirit on your church dispersed throughout the world today, that we may gain something more and that overwhelming joy of the knowledge of your love experienced by the early church. Our Father, which art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A poem from If I Were If I Only Love Jesus by Basileia Schlink. I praise the wounds and the blood of the Lamb that heals the weakness of my body. I praise the wounds and the blood of the Lamb that heals the weakness of my soul. I praise the wounds and blood of the Lamb that heals the weakness of my spirit. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his forgiving power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his cleansing power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his saving power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his releasing power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his victorious power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his renewing power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his protecting power. For him who believes in the power of the blood of Jesus, nothing is impossible. I praise the blood of the Lamb that covers all my sins so that they can no longer be seen. I praise the blood of the Lamb that cleanses me from all my sins and makes me white as snow. I praise the blood of the Lamb that has power to free me from all my bondages and chains of sin. I praise the blood of the Lamb that is stronger than my own sin-infested blood and remoulds me into the image of God. I praise the blood of the Lamb that is victorious over all powers that seek to oppress me, over every power of the enemy. I praise the blood of the Lamb that protects me from all the devious attacks of the enemy. I praise the blood of the Lamb that prepares for me the bridal garment. I praise the blood of the Lamb that makes all things new. Alleluia. Amen. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, o'ershadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks to me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.